Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. Before we get started, let's give a nod to our sponsor, BetterHelp. If you head over to betterhelp.com slash psychcentral, they'll give you a free week of online therapy. It's really cool. It's convenient, affordable, and private online counseling anytime, anywhere. Just visit betterhelp.com slash psychcentral. Vin, are you ready to get into this week's topic? I am. What is it? A couple weeks ago, Vin and I had a conversation where Vin brought up the point that it was harder for him as an adult to make friends. And then, as you recall, you said that, that this, this is how all adults felt. And, and I, I, I completely, as you recall, disagreed with you. I thought, mm-hmm. well, that's, that's not true. It's easier to make friends as an adult. But in, in general, I find you to be a reasonable person. And uh, I, I asked around. And I couldn't find anybody to agree with me. Everybody agreed with you. They all said that it was harder to make friends as an adult than it was when they were children. Uh, so, so Vin, I'm going to throw it back to you. Why do you feel that it's harder? Because clearly you're right. Well, first of all, let's talk about what we mean by friends. There are all different types of friends that we have. And this is true for children and adults. We've got, for example, work friends. We've got friends who are our neighbors. We've got the friends that we've had since we were kids. We've got college friends. You name it. We've got some level of friends. And, and they don't all interact. They're not all at the same level, even in our heads. You know, And I'm sure that's the case for you as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so the, specifically, I, I think of friends sort of in, in two separate spheres. I think of anybody who's not my enemy that I know as a friend. If I know your first name, you're my friend. Wow, that's pretty broad. I I, I know. (laughs) I don't think many people go that far. I I do, but I'm one of these people that's never met a stranger. That's just just who I am. I really like to interact with people. Okay, and that's that's cool. But what you're talking about is more of a closeness. Yeah, yeah. When I say it's, it's hard to make friends as an adult... I don't mean that kind of thing because sure, I go down to my coffee shop and it's like, oh, look, there's Keith, you know, there's Rich, you know, we, we talk, but we're not friends. We're friendly acquaintances. Sure. You know, we, we're not going to hang out anywhere else. They're never going to come over for a beer. And as kids, we had that kind of breakdown as well, but I don't think to quite the same degree as we do as adults. Well, and as kids, there were certain things that necessitated it. See, that's where I got a little bit confused. See, in my mind, it was easier to make friends as an adult because you didn't have to ask your mom's permission. (laughs) You could just be friends with whomever you want. We have a larger pool. We didn't have to not be friends with that guy because, you know, our dad didn't want to drive us across town. Well, okay. There Uh, is that. but, But I know that's not exactly what you're talking about. What you're saying is is we have a level of friends, like we have work friends, we have home friends, we have close mm-hmm. friends, and we have mm-hmm. besties. Can, can, can there be a bestie category? It's yeah, important there to can me be that a, there's a bestie well, category. Well, sure, because as kids, we always focused on my best friend. And of course, it was always just one person. <laughs> you know? And sometimes they competed. <laughs> so wait, if it was, was only one person, how could they compete? Well, were, uh, were people you... were vying for that position. Wait, wait, Vin? Was a young Vincent M. Wales setting up like a Hunger Games scenario in your backyard? <laughs> is that maybe no. this is why you're having a hard time finding no, man. friends? No, in fact, it was the other way around. See, I grew up on a street which uh, didn't have a whole lot of kids my age, but there were these two guys, Mike and Bill. They were both my age. And so the three of us were kind of like, you know, we were, we were the three musketeers. We, we always hung out together. But as a kid, you know, you're saying, okay, is, is Mike my best friend or is Bill my best friend? And often it wasn't me that was wondering that. It was like Mike's kid brother. Is Mike your best friend or is Bill your best friend? Because for some reason it seemed to matter, you know? <laughs> kid so brothers was, ruin it for everybody. I suppose it's, that might be true. Yeah. As, important, as the oldest child, I know that younger siblings <laughs> are just little, little monsters. But back to the point that you made. Where did you meet those two friends? Uh, we, on your we lived on the same street. Yeah, yeah we knew each other street. since we were like four years old. 
Okay, and it was easy. And, and it, one of the things that you brought up in the original conversation is that you were basically friends because you had a few things in common. You didn't annoy each other and you had the, lo it was location, location, location. Exactly, <laughs> it really was. I mean, that okay, was so, it, we were right there. Uh, but, but then you pointed out the differences in adulthood that make it harder. And, and this is where you fascinated me. Uh, explain it again for our audience. Well, as adults, we have a tendency to focus on differences between ourselves and other people rather than the things that we have in common. Now, as kids, we didn't really do that. You know, as kids, if you like the same TV show, that was enough for you to hang out together, you know? And from that, it was just like, well, sure, why wouldn't we be friends? Because we like the same things. So we're, we're going to be friends. I mean, real friends too, not just acquaintances. But as adults, we don't do that. We might have something in common. And then we find out, oh, you voted for him? I don't know, man. That's, I, don't, I don't think we should, uh, we should really hang out anymore. What's interesting is when you first said that to me, I thought, ha, I don't do that. I've beaten the system. I'm, I'm woke, as the kids say. I don't have that problem. But then I realized that, that I, I do. I, I, I stepped in it just like everybody else. I, I'm a sports fan. I go to sports games and I sit around the same people all the time at the sports games. And I intentionally don't ask them for uh, political beliefs, societal beliefs, uh, religious beliefs. I focus only on the thing we have in common because I know that if they say something stupid, that's exactly how I think in my brain, if they say something stupid, I won't want to talk to them anymore. Right. So even though I like to think that I'm not focusing on differences, I am because I'm avoiding them for fear that I will have to, and I'm, I'm putting have to in air quotes, reject them because they disagree with me on some other issue. Right. That's, that's odd. How do we overcome this though? I, I mean, listen, because I, I, I feel that, that the opinions that I hold about the world are, are so good that I have to keep people away from me that don't agree with me. And I, and I like to think I'm a pretty reasonable guy. I, I don't think that I'm abnormal in this way. As you just pointed out, th this is how it's done. How do we get past this? That's do a we very good to? question. Well, <laughs> that is another very good question. And, I, and I, uh, I'm not sure I know how to answer that part because that's really a personal choice. You know, if you are comfortable not even giving someone whose views are different from yours the time of day, well, if that works for you, then, then go for it. But I think with the number of people in the, in the population that are just generally unhappy and, and feeling like they don't have a solid circle of friends that, you know, maybe, maybe they ought to not do that anymore. This spoke to me on many levels because I think about mental health advocacy. In mental health advocacy, we believe strongly that people living with mental illness aren't getting a fair shake. We aren't getting enough resources. We're being stigmatized, discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And all of us have bound together to try to get better services for ourselves, for our loved ones, for other people that are sort of in this, this collective. But then we start dividing each other out. Here's the group of people that have insurance. Here's the group of people that don't. Right. Here are people who have strong family supports. Here are people who don't. Well, th this, this group has, there are they're the really sick ones. Let, let, let's focus on these people instead. And you can see, I can see, how this fractures our movements. We should have millions of people in this movement based on just statistics alone. But it's, it's such a grassroots number because people who should be allies aren't. And Vin, I know you have a lot more to say. We're going to step away to hear from our sponsor. We will be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. BetterHelp.com forward slash Psych Central. Welcome back, everyone. We are talking about friendship and the difficulties in obtaining them. Now, before break, Gabe, you were talking about uh, groups 
right? And how you've got a common cause, but despite that, we tend to separate them out into it's different fragments. subgroups, fragments, yes. Yeah. So how does that pertain to our personal lives? Do we well, do that in our personal lives too? Absolutely. The, the fact that we do this in a group uh, shows, to, at least to me, that we must do this in our personal life. If we're willing to fragment our cause, our group, our associations, our business plans based on some of this stuff, friends are way more personal. You know, friends come into your homes. Friends interact with your family. You tell friends deep, dark secrets. That's way more serious than you know, business decisions or causes or organizations or, so yeah, we must. Good point. And I think what, what we're getting back to now is that your misconception initially was that the term friends is a lot broader than I was indicating and that all the people you talked to were thinking as well. You were, you were including everybody, right? And not personally close friends. I just thought that it was easy to walk up and talk to people. Well, that's that, different. And that, that is easier for you than for me because you're an extrovert and I am not. So yes, it is easier for you to do that. It is easier for you to make easy acquaintance with people. But getting down to the nitty gritty of somebody that you feel an actual bond with, a real friendship bond, do you agree that that is now more difficult as an adult? Yeah. Yes. As a person who lives with bipolar disorder, I am, I am very public about that. So I, I think this led me a little bit of a stray because I thought, well, I share the most intimate details of my life, you know, suicidal thinking, panic attacks in public, having lost my job, the, the disintegration of two marriages. I'll, I'll share that with anybody who asks, mm -hmm. but there's another level to me. There, 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 there's, there's a personal side there's, there's my regrets. There's the things that I, that keep me up at night. I, I don't share those with people that I meet on Tuesday. I, I share those with my, my, my very, very inner circle. It is true. I'll let anybody in my house. I just kind of have an open door policy. I'm really trusting, but if I met somebody tomorrow, it would be years before I shared some of the innermost details. Right. And you're right. When I was younger and, and very young, you know, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, I told them all my favorite foods. And to me, those were innermost details. Inner, <laughs> inner, those, yeah, just. Yeah, yeah. We didn't, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, secret things back then. One of the things I want to touch on real quick is that you said adults have different levels of friends and kids have different levels of friends. Right. I think that's one of those things where we're, we're creating a similarity where one doesn't actually exist. Kids do have different levels of friends, but they're, they're manufactured by, you know, by our parents or by our guardians, by location. Adults have different levels of friends on purpose. We did this intentionally. Uh, and I don't mean, you know, best friend and not best friend. I, I mean, mm -hmm. we intentionally classify people in a way that children do not. Yeah, I would agree with that. We do. I mean, we still have the, the different kinds of situational friends that we talked about earlier, but you're right. We do go further than that. For example, children don't have the enemy of my enemy is my friend. They're just your friend because you're your friend. And as, and as you said, they focus very much on the similarities. They all sit right. around and they talk about the stuff they have in common. And those, those are the things that they do. And in fact, when they find differences, you know, they, they fight about it and then make up. When adults find differences, we don't fight about it. We start to plot. You know, we, we start to whisper behind other people's backs. You know, can, can you believe that? Did, did you hear about Vin? Did you hear what he's thinking about doing? We don't go to Vin and say, hey, I'm worried about this decision. But very, very close friends do. Right. The closer you are, the more likely you are to tell somebody when you think they are going to make a mistake. The more surfacey you are, the more likely you are to tell others that you think that your friend is going to make a mistake. And this is where, you know, things like, well, he stabbed me in the back. No, no, no. It's just business. When has a kid ever said that? Right. <laughs> you stabbed me in the back. No, no, no. It's just lunch. <laughs> so, so much of this is created 
by adults for reasons that the more I think about it, the more uncomfortable I am with it. Why do we behave this way? We're, we're isolating ourselves from others, from people who, who, with the exception of this one difference, could be our, our, yeah. our ally, our friend. And you're right. It, we do it all the time. We do it all the time. And uh, how do we stop? This is very interesting to me because I don't, I don't know how we stop. Uh, I, I, am, I am fond of saying that I'll be friends with anybody that I find the things that we have in common and I focus on that and I ignore the things that we don't have in common. But, but listen, that, that, that's kind of bubkiss. Uh, if you come to be and you're a misogynist and a racist, but you like the same sport as me, no, no, I'm not going to focus on our similarities. Right. I, I don't want you in my life. But, but that's, like, that's like a real high level thing. Where does it, you know, what if you voted for a different person than me? Is, is that enough? Uh, what if you're a different religion than me? Is that enough? Uh, what about when we see something on the news and I'm like, no, 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 she was a good mother. And you're like, no, 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 that's horrible parenting. Should, should we become bitter enemies then? I, I don't know. I, I'm having trouble deciding where the line is. And of course, I, I just discovered there was a line like a week ago. And that line is going to be different for everyone. You know, it's, it's a very personal kind of thing. Some people don't care about politics. So they don't care that this potential friend voted for whomever. It just doesn't matter to them. Other people are the exact opposite. It really matters. So it is a very personal decision. So it's it's all going to be up to them. One of the things I completely agree with is that adults do have higher expectations of our friends. We do. And I don't mean time. I mean what we want from them. We practically want our inner circle to sign loyalty pledges. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's bizarre. Uh, yeah. You will be loyal to me in public and private. You will wake up at midnight when I call you. And if you don't, there's going to be problems. And, you know, I didn't think that I was this way. I, I did not think that I was this way. But uh, in the preparation for this show, we started going through scenarios. And I was like, you know, I, I would be hurt if I went to the hospital overnight and I texted you. And you woke up that morning and saw a text that said, hey, Vin, I'm in the hospital. And you went to work and called me after work. I'd be hurt. I texted you I was in the hospital and you waited eight hours to call and check on me? Jerk face. Sorry, dude. Yeah. So you're, you're right. You heard it here first. I am not as woke as I thought I was. <laughs> and yes, this week I learned what woke meant. So that helps. Does our audience know what woke means? Given the demographics, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Just in case they don't have annoying millennials in their life, woke is just a reference to how people should be aware of a current state or affair. Uh, so while you're obsessing with the Kardashians, there are millions of homeless in the world. You need to be woke. That's So it's a, a bad grammar kind of thing. Oh, oh, all cool words are bad grammar. You know, our after party is going to be lit. <laughs> that means awesome, but in 2017. <laughs> then we got to wrap up. So you brought this into my life and made me realize that I do the same thing as everybody else. And, and it all started with this misconception of what is a friend. Mm -hmm. There's much to unpack there. Because I thought that anybody who I'm on a first name basis with that I don't dislike and who doesn't dislike me is my friend. But you pointed out that adults are not that simple. And we are much more guarded into letting people into our inner circles because of our family members, our wives, our children, job prospects, etc. And there's all kinds of things that we haven't figured out. What are your last words on this? What do you want our audience to know? We just need to be aware that we are doing this and that the only person that's being harmed by this is ourselves. We need friends. Everybody needs friends. And I find that, you know, the older I, I get, the fewer I seem to have because the old ones, they just kind of, you know, time takes them away from us and, and that sort of thing. So it's important to make connections with other human beings and not just superficial ones. And we should point out that by time takes them away from us, you mean we grow apart. We do grow apart like, and some of them die, you know, it, it, 
It's the sucky fact of life. Well, this, this is people move. We switch jobs. We get mm-hmm. busy with our, with our lives. Yeah. Obviously then we need way more than 20 minutes to unpack all of this, but it is an interesting idea that what we expect from people now isn't based on what we need, but it's based on what we don't want. It isn't based on what we like. It's based on what we dislike. And it isn't based on who we want to surround ourselves with, but well, frankly, who we want to keep out. Mm -hmm. And that's just really kind of an interesting thing to consider on how it is impacting our individual lives. And that's, of course, only a question that each one of our listeners can make for themselves. Right. But it's interesting to think about. So thank you for bringing it up. You are welcome. If you're not a member of the Psych Central Show Facebook group, you are really missing out. You can suggest topics, ask questions, comment on shows, and interact with the hosts. Just go over to psychcentral.com slash FB show, all lowercase. Click become a member, we'll approve you, and then you're in the VIP club. Everyone, we will see you next week. Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email TalkBack at PsychCentral.com. 